Hello! In this video, we're going to go over the scrolled text widget. So let me go over this um, example. It's very, very simple, um, but I've, I've um, seen a couple of people request that I cover it, so I will do so. Um, so this is the scrolled text widget. Not this text, but this here. So you can see that um, it's quite simple. All you have is a to enter text widget along with a scroll bar. So if I um, if I uh, just um, keep holding uh, return, it will fill up the text box, and I can then scroll back up. And if I type something in here, then I can scroll up and then I can see it there and come down. So you can see that it's essentially a text box with a scroll attached. So this would be very useful if you're, if you say, if you say, oh, the user has to input, I don't know, um, a list, for example, you know, like eggs, milk, etc. Um, you know, and if it stretched on for quite a long time, alternatively, um, you could fill it um, preemptively with um, a paragraph of text or two, and the user could slowly read through it. Um, okay, and then we also have, so say I have the hello uh, standard, you can also print the console and thus then obtain the user's input, so you, you could then take that string and do a different process with it. So let's go over, let's go over this. So, very simple, import to Kinter STK, we need that, and then we also need the school text widget. So, this is all fine. So it's where you define the school text widget. So this is where we do it. So my school text widget is the name of the widget, and we're saying scroll text dot scroll text. So this is calling the constructor from the class here and we're saying um, put it in root, wrap it around the text, um, do you need this included so don't forget about it. Um, the width, you can set the width and the height um, to whatever you want, I just chose those two and you can also set the font that you wish um, to type into it. Um, that could be your custom font, that could just be one of the web safe ones um, and then you just grid it. Um, like this. Don't put dot grid there. Put it like this, because you could you could do dot grid, and anything. So your my school text widget won't store anything. So that's why you want it my school text widget there. Okay. So that's our that's your school text widget. Now I do want to show you if we do control click, we can actually go into the class of the school text widget. Um, we're saying. Um, what are we saying? Well, we can see, we can just see what, what it is, what, what we have in here. So we won't dive really deep into it, but I just want to show you what it's made up of. So we've got the scroll bar widget, which we saw, and we also have, um, um, what do we have as well? We have the, um, um, the text widget, there we go, there it is right there. So we have the text, so we have the scroll, and um, scroll bar with the text. So I, as I was saying, um, it's very similar, very, very similar. So um, that's just, I just wanted to show you that there, um, just to show how simple it is. And then, okay, so here's where we, things get a little bit interesting because unlike a label where the data is stored um, in a variable, Oh, not, not a label, sorry, an entry box where the data is stored in a variable. In Since since the um, input expected from, from the user is normally, if you're using a text widget, is normally going to be mul multiple lines long. Granted, you could store that in a string, but the easier way of doing it is um, just storing it in the widget and then retrieving what you want from it. So this is why we have... Um, this method. So we're saying um, my school tech widget dot get. So we're still dot getting, but um, you have to pass in two parameters: the start and the end of um, what um, amount of text you want. Um, 
So in this example that I showed you, we're starting at the first character. This is what, what this means, 1.0 first character, okay? And then we're going all the way to the end and we're saying end minus 1c. So end makes sense because you want to go to the very end, but what does this minus 1c mean? Well, that stands for minus one character. So um, why do we want that? Why do we want that? Well, I'll show you that. So if we delete minus one C, run this again, we have hello. And if we just print the console, you can see that um, as we do that, you can see these gaps, okay? Those are new line characters. And if we don't want those, which we tend to not, I mean, you can have them, I, I just don't see the point. If we do minus one C, then, um, Oh, sorry. If we do minus one C, then oh, hold on, my my thing's not there. Sorry, hold on. Let me run that again. There we go. Okay. Um. So if we do print the console, you can see that the 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 new line character is gone. That space between the outputs there. So that's what that means. Uh, minus one C. So I would tend to put that in because I don't want new line characters. It can be quite annoying if that if there's an error and it's because, oh, I have a new line character in my string. Um, but you can have it if you wish. And again, if you want to keep the... If you are going to have... Um, if I run it again, sorry. If, if you are going to have... Um, um, uh, like multiple lines, so so let's say you've got hello, my name is Ben. I have sorry, I have an apple, an apple. So you can see if you wanted to keep paragraphs in your input, you would keep the new line characters because that's what's discerning between a. Um, uh, uh, a sent like two sentences and a paragraph is that new line character. So again, just something to bear in mind whether or not to include that minus one C. And then of course your button. Doo -doo -doo -doo. So that's the same, you know, just calling the function. So how do we get hello into the scroll text widget immediately? Well we use dot insert. So TK dot insert. So we use dot insert, yeah, yeah, yeah. So my school tech widget dot insert, and then you um, pass in tk dot insert, and then hello. So that's just what you do, and then there you go. There's hello there. So very very simple again, and that would be useful for pre-populating the the um, pre-populating the text widget. Again, it is slightly different because you're not doing dot set. You're doing dot insert, and again, that's because you're using a text widget instead of a tkinter ver string variable or tkinter int variable. You know what I mean. Um, so that's why. And then, yeah, that's all. So that's a very short video just on on this widget. Um, it's a very useful widget. See if you're having to define two different widgets and combining them together and putting them maybe into another frame or something like that. You can just use it out of the box. So quite useful. Anyway, that's all. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.